Hi, and welcome to a small, medium, at large podcast. I'm your host, Gail Heisen, bringing you intimate stories that heal. First off, I want to say thank you to all our listeners who have taken the time to write comments, share their stories, share our stories with other people, and subscribe. We started our first podcast in September, and here we are now in May, and we have over 800 and 30 subscribers. So I wanna thank everybody for subscribing to our show. And last show, episode number 19, we had a guest, David Blank, who was speaking about the transformational experience of travel. So I thought it might be good to have another travel guest. And today we have a guest with us from Egypt, from Cairo. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest, Khalid, El, El Sayed, El, not good in the pronunciation, El Sayed, yeah. El Sayed. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little bit about him. He is a tour guide. He has a PhD in tour guidance, Egyptology. He lives in Cairo and married with two children. He has a master's about the chapter 151 of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is the guidebook for the spirit through the afterlife underworld trip to get to the internal life. So we have a few different things we want to discuss with him today. Let's welcome Khalid to our show. Welcome. Hello, Gail. Hello. Welcome. How are you? Wonderful. <laughs> I, I realize it's very late for you in Cairo right now, so I'm very happy that you were able to join us at such an unusual hour. <laughs> yeah, it's not that late, but still, uh, you know, I like I like to meet with you at the time, so it's quiet, um, uh, so we can talk. That's right. We're going to have a little conversation. Exactly. I, I, I was wondering, since I sort of start off on a personal level with everyone, I, I can't remember how you and I met each other. And I was wondering if you remembered how that happened. Yeah, actually, I, you know, as you know, my Facebook has uh, some of my ex-tourists and uh, also some uh, Egypt lovers who uh, like to hear and see some posts about Egypt. So, and uh, we, we, we share that on my Facebook. So you, you, you were, you was one, one of them. So, so we, we met and we did talk about Egypt and your uh, visit to Egypt and you sent me some photos. So that's how we started to know each other. So uh, while we were, Talking about Egypt and your visit, you asked me if, if it is possible to meet. So, so it was very nice, good idea to uh, to uh, to uh, to invite me to, to for that. I, I like that really. So that's how we met. That's how we met. So yeah, it shows that the, you know when you're doing these podcasts and the internet, you don't know who your guest is going to be. And so yeah. I'm just so thrilled that's how we found each other and that we've been exactly. sharing photos and stories before we even came together today for the show for our audience. That's actually my good luck, you know. <laughs> yes, in fact, totally. I wanted to yeah. bring up one thing that you shared that I was so grateful for because I would not have known about it except when we finally saw a little bit in our mainstream media which was yeah. the ceremony of the uncovering of the Sphinx. And oh, okay. if Matt posted those amazing videos, we mm. wouldn't have got to share that moment in real time that was happening. And myself oh. and anyone else that got to see your, your videos then were very, very grateful to feel like we were part exactly. of it. Yeah. I went to Egypt in 2010 with my family um, yeah. I, two of my kids and my husband, and we were there with a tour of a, an old friend of his, and we were walking those streets and seeing the sphinxes being uncovered, not knowing that there were going to be hundreds of them <laughs> that they were. Gonna yeah. Be. Oh. Uh, 2010. About that. What's no, that? 2010. That's the peak yes. of the, the peak of tourism. So mm -hmm. I remember that I used. And that's why I tell my two. I, I I say that to my tourists. That's a, a a great chance to visit now because, you know, one one hour visit is about four hours. In in when it's crowded, we used to stand in a queue for like 
an hour to just get in and just see uh, Sphinx. Stay for five minutes, then back. One hour. So uh, now it is open and uh, it's all for you. I mean, I mean, you can enjoy it. You can feel the spirit of the place. But to, in to 2010, that, that the peak of the, the, the tourism in the time, uh, of course, as, as you know, 2011, we got the uprising and tourism came down and uh, until today, you know, we, when, when tourism uh, got back to normal in 2019, just for two months, three months, then coronavirus hit us and it's bad luck for about 12 years now. So uh, uh, the, the country in very good shape. Uh, tourism, uh, uh, to, tourism as industry is ready to accept uh, tourists, uh, but still people cannot come and afraid to come. Oh, so, but really we are in good shape and everything. Uh, uh, we are doing good in cleansing the site. Some sites get zero cases with Corona uh, cases. Uh, so uh, we are ready. You are ready to to accept the people, but uh, people need to know that it is at least safer safer than home, whatever mm -hmm. the country. I mean, we do, are doing good in summer. The cases are very down, and uh, uh, also also the, the the cost dollar is is high now. Dollar dollar will not stay that high in the future. So it's a great chance to use your dollar. I mean, almost you spend like what you spend home. So, so it is. It is. I keep. I keep saying that to my tourists. Actually, for the good for them and for Egypt, and for me, of course. So, tell me, <laughs> what was it like when you were growing up, or when you were starting? Thoughts in your mind about what you want to be in the future, or what work you want to do and your love for your country. Was this something that you thought about then or was this something as an adult you decided to do in later years and get drawn to, because that's a deep study to the, the history and, and the amount of knowledge that you must know about Egypt. Uh, actually, uh, I, I, I visited New York uh, about 1993. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, uh, I, I got American friends in, in New York, hosted me for like a month and then we stayed friends until until today, of course, but, mm -hmm. but we, we kept in touch until I left uh, the States. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to visit them every year in the Christmas. Well, I, 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 I was part of the family, actually. And the father, uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, uh, he was one of the board of Metropolitan. For, for, for a period of time. And he, he is in love with Egyptology and uh, uh, he, he got me in a tour in Metropolitan, in the Egyptian wing, mm -hmm. from A to Z. So I inspired of what he said. Most of what he said, I, I, I got no idea about. We didn't study that in schools. We didn't know really, I didn't, I didn't know really anything about what he said until we finished the tour. Uh, and the tour was, 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 I did the tour with one, with another friend. So we, we really inspired of that. As I was, I remember in that day, I think, that I was, on, on another day after, uh, that I was, uh, came to, to do, a, what do you call, what do you call, a lecture, uh, a lecture there. So, so uh, he invited me, and you know the Metropolitan were, was back to his people, and uh, I also surprised for how Zahi Hawass got this, you know, this famous. Uh, he, became, he is very famous there. People inspired of him. The Metropolitan filled with people. And is, excuse me, this is in New York. This man in New York. Yeah. He, he lives in the fifth, about the 48th street, mm -hmm. in front of Metropolitan. 
So I got a chance to visit Metropolitan every day. I spent a month in their, in their apartment. In the so I used to visit it, it, every day. So I got inspired really, really about was it there. I tried to study in the States. I couldn't because it's very expensive to do that. Uh, so uh, I got a chance to study home in Egypt uh, with uh, uh, professors got good knowledge. They studied in London. They, they got their PhD in, uh, from London, Oxford, I think. Uh, and they they the, uh, they adopted my my. Uh, 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 the, the, the subject of my master's degree, master's degree and later on my PhD. So it was, it was that's, that's the story of how I inspired and how I continued my studies. Then, uh, and, but actually I am I'm a tour guide after I did a diploma for two, two years. So I did a diploma for two years. It's almost like the same subjects you get in college, mm -hmm. but in two years. So, uh, then after that, I continued studying PhD, master's degree and PhD. But during the time, I used to work as tour guide. So while I'm studying. So, and later on, my, my tour became, uh, my master's degree really dominated my tour. So, so it is about a tour with the, with the deceased after his death, until his resurrection. And that's what I do through uh, the, your tour through Egypt, through the tombs and temples and uh, uh, monuments in, 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 uh, in the museums. So we can see. Hmm. Was the gentleman in New York who inspired you, was yeah. he a New Yorker or was he an Egyptian man? He's a New Yorker. Oh, wow. A New Yorker, yeah. It's uh, American family, and uh, you know he, he 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 got two daughters, very good close friends, and his uh, uh, great wife. We used to call her Hakoma. You know, <laughs> she is a great friend, a great host, and friendly, and she loves Egypt. All of them really uh, amazing family, and uh, uh, we really we keep in touch until today as 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 family. So, yes. uh, yeah, and we, we, of course, we share the Egyptology and, uh, you know, the, the hobby of uh, Egyptology and history, history of Egypt. Uh, you know, I haven't been able to be back to Egypt since 2010, but yeah. I loved, I loved that country so much. And I have very, imp a very important memory there that I'd like to share. But yeah. um, I do want to say that, um, I don't know, I, I, I felt very healthy in Egypt. And mm. like I was at a place, it's the only place where the mosquitoes didn't eat me alive like they do in every other place exactly. in the world. I have no idea why. And my family who never gets mosquito bites, they were getting bitten up there in Egypt. And I was like sailing along, like, see, this is, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why, and I was, and, and I have. If, 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 if it's a bite, it's not dangerous. I mean, you don't. It's just just a little bite, and it doesn't it doesn't yes. cause any. I, 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 in some places, the food, the people, but the energy of being in, like I can't imagine what it must be like for you to have grown up and lived in a place where whether you're walking to school or you're going to the store, you're walking past things that are thousands of years old that are still preserved. Yeah. That, just, that, that holds so much history. You know, mm. in the United States, everything is only hundreds of years. You know, the, there are thousands of years histories of Native American people, but as yeah. far as any other civilization, you know, constructed things or any of this kind of thing, we're very young here. When we go to Egypt, we're in, we're really in the history that's just phenomenal. Yeah, actually Egypt belongs to the world, it doesn't belong to the Egyptians only. So any human belong to Egypt. So the history of Egypt is, is not Egyptian, it's not our history, I mean only. It's right. the history of so, all uh, humans. So any human anywhere on earth, he can talk about his ancestors, the pharaohs. So anything started here. I mean, 
the uh, toothpaste, the the tiles, you know, the the the, the WC tiles. Right. You, that's Egyptian. That's Imhotep. You know, the, the, what you see in Saqqara. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the invention of tiles. That's sticks and ropes. So everything we, we, we have in our modern life, five stars hotels, you see huge columns. Uh, that's, that's Egyptian. That's Imhotep ideas. Well, that's, since so you mentioned the, Saqqara, I have to bring up my little Saqqara story because that place means a lot to me. Yes, a car, the bird of building in yes, and structure on earth. When when I I think is that is that the first pyramid or the oldest pyramid? The oldest. The no. oldest pyramid. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when I went there, there was scaffolding all around. They were doing some, you know, prepare, you know, to keep it safe, or I'm not sure they were doing some kind of construction there. So there was, it wasn't as many people and it wasn't very crowded. And I got there sort of at the end of the day and it was 2010. And when I went there, I didn't know that's where we were going. And then she told us how it was the oldest, you know, our friend took us there in the cab. And when we got there, I, for some reason, and I don't even know why, I had taken some of my dad's ashes with me who uh -huh. had died two years earlier in 2008. And I felt that it was very important for me to bring his ashes to Egypt because I just felt like he would have liked to have gone there one day. Yeah, how nice. So I yeah. took the ashes and each time we went somewhere, I kept saying, no, this isn't the place. No, this isn't the moment. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Saqqara, I said, this is the place. I must uh, Okay. <laughs> so I didn't realize, I thought because it was two years since he had died, I thought, mm. oh, when I open up this little bottle and I sprinkle the ashes, I mm. thought, oh, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to feel anything. I'm just going to be happy that I spread his ashes and then I'll leave. Yeah. Well, that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> when I you opened could... up the bottle and I started to pour the ashes in, in, in Saqqara mm. right on the stones, I felt such a presence of the spirit of my father come in that moment that yeah. I got so emotional. I was crying so intensely and it was yeah. spontaneous. I didn't know that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And my children were ready at the exit, as mm -hmm. was my husband there. And yeah. I had no idea that the temple had closed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was busy crying. Yeah. And the next thing you know, I'm being escorted by two military guys or guards with guns yeah. on each side. And they, yeah. they're looking at me and they don't even know what to say because I'm just a mess of crying. And I can't exactly explain because I'm up much just yeah. English and I'm just trying to say, it was my father, it was my father. Uh. <laughs> so I didn't know what they thought, but they were pretty kind and nice. But they yeah. were escorting me. I was not to stay there for another minute, you know. Uh -huh. And my kids are looking at me going, oh, God, what has mom done now, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, when we get in the cab, I'm still deeply emotional because I feel that I've truly connected to the spirit of my father. Yeah. So I say to myself, Dad, if you and I really just connected here at Saqqara, can you show me a sign? Can you give me something so that I know it was you? Uh -huh. And the next thing, I right after I say that, the taxi pulls in to an SO gas station. Uh -huh. And SO doesn't really exist in the United States. I don't know if it became Exxon later or what exactly, but the name Exxon. SO is not, uh, you don't see it on stations here anymore. It's a very old name from like the 50s and the 60s. Exactly. And that's when my dad worked for the SO gas station company. Uh -huh. And he used to bring me, they had this, the, you know, their brand thing then was when you came in to get gas, you'd get a free gift. And the uh, gift was put a tiger in your tank. And uh, I love <laughs> tigers. That was my favorite wild animal. And my dad uh, would bring me home these little salt and pepper shakers or a little keychain or a little uh, something with a tiger on it. Uh -huh. Not only was the SO gas station sign there as we pulled in, but there was a huge billboard of the tiger. Uh, put the tiger in your tank. And I mean, we had not seen that since the 60s. 
Uh, and there okay. it was in Egypt, minutes after I left Saqqara. I so, knew I had connected to my dad. Good sign, yeah. Yes, and it was an excellent <laughs> sign, and I felt completely joyous <laughs> and grateful that a little of him was in Egypt, and we had mm. that moment. And I believe it was the power of that place that made Actually, me... Actually, ancient connected. Egyptians used to believe that in that also. They used to believe that uh, that's, Saqqara is a sacred place. Oh. So that, that's why they like to be buried around. So, so uh, Saqqara, the, the, that tomb about 2700 BC. Then uh, Pharaohs later on, uh, about 200 years after, and even more than that, they started to believe that we have to bury there close to Zosur. So they start to believe that uh, 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 there is a mystery in that place. So that's why uh, it, it's honor for them to, to bury close to Zosur. So, so it's, it, uh, that's why it's, the, you see tombs from the early Egyptian mm. time until the end of the Greek era. So they used to, used to believe that that's a sacred grave and uh, uh, they like to be buried there. So that's, uh, that's why it's a cemetery belong to a huge era between 2700 uh, BC until uh, the end of the Greek. So, so that's, that's uh, the most sacred place in Egypt, actually. Well, I, of course, get this information, you know, 12 years later, but, I'm, yeah. <laughs> but I always feel validated in when I trust my gut to tell yeah. me where to do these things that I feel like it was a spiritual thing. When I listen to that, it always, it, it never steers me wrong. And now yeah. you're, you're telling me I actually did that all the, in the right place. And I was yeah. there for weeks. I could have done it on the Nile. I could have done it at um, uh, the Great Oops, Pyramid. Oh. It looks yeah. so I didn't do it in any of those places because I said I have to wait till I get the feeling. So, so yeah, so you, you got you got the right place, you know. That's very much a very sacred place. Uh since early days, even for even for ancient Egyptians. So mm. well, uh, it's a powerful place. Yeah, exactly. So and and, and now by the way, it th it, things things changed in Egypt. It, you know, you came in 2010. Today, we, we did three belt for all the sites. Like if you went to there in Saqqara, you'd see everything is different today. Oh. The, the, we used the, the, uh, the, the, the time when, where the, when the tourism off. So we rebuilt and uh, we renew all the sites. Uh, we discovered many sites also. So uh, if you came to Egypt today, you see many different uh, places about Egypt. Well, or many different, you know, the, they look different. All the places look different today. It's, it's the kind of place that you, even though we were there for two and a half weeks, it's yeah. not enough time. There's too exactly. much there to, to see. It would be nice also to visit again, you know. It would yeah. be nice to see you again there. Absolutely, I, I, it was one of my family's favorite trips. Was going. To I'll Egypt. do it. I'll do it for you, like you never visit Egypt before. Uh, so, <laughs> from my point it, of view, when it's safe, I would be thrilled to make another trip there. I, I had an, a, sure. also a, a very spiritual experience in the Great Pyramid. Mm, uh, exactly. One of those. It was a moment where, for some reason, there was no tour guide and no persons up in the king's chamber. Uh -huh. And I didn't know that you were or weren't supposed to do this, but I again felt so drawn to doing this, and so did my son, that I jumped into the uh, stone. I don't know what it was. It looked like a, a coffin, a coffin or a bath or something. Yeah, the coffin. I, lay, I laid it. It's a coffin, coffin. very small. And when I yeah. laid inside it, it was yeah. in the king's chamber. And when yeah. I laid inside and put my arms against the cold stone wall, sound yeah. just came out of me. Like, yeah. and I don't know, and I have not 
I'm very musically not inclined at all. I cannot sing a tune, but the yeah. sound that came out was so beautiful. I don't know yeah, where it, it kind came. Of energy. Yeah. Oh, and it, it and, and there were people, some other people came a few minutes later and said that they told me afterwards they were so moved by the sound mm -hmm. that it really affected them. Yeah. And my son jumped in also. He wanted to get this, have the have the feeling also. My daughter yeah. and husband looked at us like we were crazy, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> many people do that. Yeah. Oh God, and what is that? You, not easy to get them out. Not so. only that, it yeah. was like I I I I had to climb a wood ladder all the way up, and it's very you know narrow area. I yeah. never felt fear. I never felt claustrophobia. I don't know. There's something about Egypt that all the things that might bother me in other places did not bother me there. Yeah, you, you know, you know what? When we talk about tombs and dead people, and that that's not sometimes it's not nice to talk about, or you, you don't feel comfort mm -hmm. when you go to any tomb in Valley of the Kings, and you walk around, you feel amazed, you feel happy. You feel that this part, but they are clever to, to have this impression because they don't believe in this. So they don't believe that they will die. So they believe in eternity. So they can pass that feeling to you. The artist, the even the pharaoh who, who the, you know, or the priest who designed this uh, tomb, uh, the artist, the designer, all got you to feel that this guy is not dead. This guy is, uh, you know, live, living, uh, happy. Always, always touch your smile. On yeah. the coffin, if you touch your smile, touch. It's not smiling. Always, always to show because they, they are kings. You have, to, they has, they have to show uh, power. Mm -hmm. So they don't really smile. You know, they, they always you see touch. There comes the second touch your smile. So they, they like to show you that they are happy. Uh, and if 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 the dead is happy, that means he is he is sure that he will pass the judgment day. He, he did good in his life, mm -hmm. so he want to say that I did good in my life, so I'm ready, and uh, nothing will happen to me. I just pass the judgment day, get the eternity. Since we're speaking about that, you and I wrote about something that I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, ba. BA about the pub, the, yeah. Yes, is that the name for the underworld trip for the spirit? That's, that's the name of the journey, the spirit, the spirit. Yeah. Oh, the spirit, we, 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 yeah. We, 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 the to make it uh, to make it uh, simple when we die, uh, uh, each, uh, each part of we are we, uh, uh, Egyptians believe in that, and that's how the Egyptians believe. That mm -hmm. if anyone uh, alive, uh, different parts, which is the ka and the pa and his shape, you know, the shape which is a body. Anything belong to you as a shape, your body or your name or your cartouche or your statue or your carving on the wall, that's your shape. Mm -hmm. And also the ka, which is uh, the part of the body which of of the person which will stay in the tomb, then the pa which is what we call the spirit, which was, will leave from the tomb to the underworld. Although you'll see in any tomb, a false door, got spells written on the door, so that's where the the spells to ease the 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 the. the is for the spirit, the pa, to leave. Uh, you, so the pa will leave, face with you know so many, uh, so many to face uh, before the judgment day. So you will face, you will face scarabs, you will face uh, gates. You need some certain spells to Egyptians ma magicians. They believe in magic. So always because if you think like. Logic, you 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 not you not get any sense of what they think about. This is something so are... that, that I agree a hundred percent. Because 
I've done things uh, with scientists here where I do, you know, uh, psychic, um, I'm a subject in psychic experiments and things. Yeah. And they're, everybody's always studying this to be able to write scientific papers and things like this. But I always feel like there's a part of this that's magic and it's supposed to stay magic. That it's exactly. not supposed to ever be, you're never supposed to know the reason why or how it happens. It's just the way that it is. It will happen. So if you ask me how it will happen, I, it's easy. Couple mm -hmm. of spells. <laughs> you will you will narrate couple of spells. It will happen. So the king took in his tomb, got, you know, the huge each pharaoh used to have a poet with him. So to have because the underworld, they think that the underworld need a boat to go through, mm -hmm. lead it by Gadra. Gadra will lead the disease, the Pharaoh disease. So Khofu got a huge boat, real boat. Later on, Tut Anch Amen got very small boat, wooden boat in the museum. So uh, why it's very small, why it's not that big like Khofu? It is as the big one, Hofuga, but it is actually small. So if, with a couple of magical spells, it would be uh, huge, well, mm -hmm. and you would use it as the other king. So uh, even the magic became, pra you know, things became practical later on. So magic solved all the problems, which is the subject of our uh, discussion today. You know, yes, the uh, healing and... Yes, about the foods, the, the magic. Uh, so and magic is a big part of, of to heal, to heal, you know. So magic, you just use magic in uh, uh, all the aspects of life, especially, especially the underworld. So, so the, the spells we, the spells the, the deceased will narrate or the power will use since the death, what we call death, we call the start of the underworld trip. You don't believe in death. So uh, this, the first thing will happen to do the mummification of the body. That's my scene, 151. Mm -hmm. So that's very important one because the uh, uh, goddesses and Anubis uh, will, will, will do uh, magic and to protect the mummy, to protect the deceased while he's doing the mummification, which, which will continue for 70 days. Wow. Then after that, we will bury the deceased. If, if the body intact and we bury the deceased, we, we close the tomb, the ba, which which in the tomb is in museum, you see some, some uh, statues or uh, monuments as small birds with the head of the deceased. So that's the bar. They, they think it looks like a bird. So it will leave through the door do the underworld trip, uh, best judgment day, all the gods and goddesses would support, uh, some will support the deceit, some will record like thoughts, will record every single detail, and Osiris will decide if he can bet or uh, or not. So we, we, Egyptians got no hell, I mean, right. also the, the whole thing, Mm. The worst thing, the worst thing you can get, that to be nothing, to be to get nothing. So, so if you pass, you'll get the eternity. If you did good in your life, you'll get the eternity. Which is what? It's your life back. <laughs> you're not, you know, it's not like paradise and whatever. It's your life back. They believe in the. They believe that their life is paradise. Just so to get my, is this my life back. Is this so? When when after the person is uh, put into uh, the sarcophagus or the tomb or whatever, do they yeah. feel that the spirit returns after it does the full journey and goes through exactly, and it, means, so, so it goes back to the original place where exactly. the body is mummified. That's why they, they want to have. Do you have pyramids? They have tombs hidden. They have mummies. They have statues. They have the face everywhere. When you, when you see the monuments, you see the cartouche of King Tutankhamen, every single corner, like crazy. I mean, you have in one monument, you see like 100 times his name on. So he can recognize himself. So, if he could recognize himself, 
if the power recognizes the deceased, he will be resurrected. If not, he will be gone forever. So, that's why they that's why the that, that Moses got you know raised the face uh, of Hachib Suhud and also the priests raised the face of Achen Atin. Uh, you see the sarcophagus of Achen Atin erased, the face erased, the name erased from everywhere. So they don't want uh, Achen Atin uh, to be resurrected with the other pharaohs. Mm. They believe that he is, he, 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 because he got one god and he dismissed all the gods in the time, and he got only one god, which is Atin. So, and also changed the capital of Egypt. So, so priests in the time did the revolution after his era and he moved his, he, he is respected as a pharaoh, but still they don't want him to be resurrected with the other pharaohs. They don't want him to get his life back. So they wipe the face off of the- The face, the eyes, the- And every the rep- anything so he can't find his way back. What we found, what we found was hidden in the sand, we are lucky to find some pieces hidden in the sand somewhere around Amarna. So the, that's why you see some pharaohs, uh, their faces are red, like Hatshepsut also. Uh, Tutmos the, th- the second, the third, erased her face so from, so from the temples. That exhibit, which I saw when it came here to the United States, it was in San Francisco of Tutankhamun. Mm-hmm. But you could just walk by for one second. But there were all these comments back then. I don't remember how long ago, but this was a long time ago when he came here. Mm. That that spiritually, this was not a good thing. That he should have been kept in Egypt and shouldn't have mm. been going on a tour. And I was wondering, uh, did the Egyptian people feel that way about it? I, mm. I'm not. I don't know if it was disrespectful that he he was toured around. And some people were saying that, oh, something could happen to you if you go and see Tutankhamun. And uh, so, so there were different things that were being said at the time. Actually, the mummy always in the tomb. We moved the mummy of Tutankhamun lately. Mm. So the mummy always in the tomb. We, didn't, we never moved never the mummy. Never went on a trip. Yeah, only oh. the coffin. Okay, oh, well, that's good the, to know. The golden <laughs> coffin, yeah. And oh. uh, what... What we moved, uh, the mo- mummy of Ramses II. Mm-hmm. Lots of debate in the time why we sent Ramses II. Also, lots of talk about why, why we. Uh, but actually, we sent it to France to do some studies on on the body, and with all respect, and stayed for a while. Then we got it back. Mm-hmm. So that's the only mummy moved for a pharaoh uh, moved outside. Uh, still, some talk about if if we have to exhibit their mummies, you know, those guys like to wrap their mummies, hide their mummies, and bury in peace, and we right. got them out, which is against their beliefs. Ah. Uh, uh, that's the talk about. That's why we built for them a new museum today, uh, and we have them in very nice. Uh, nice place to be buried, so respected. And uh, I believe that it is, it's good for them, good for the civilization. Nice to see, uh, because we see them in respect. We don't really do any, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, they, they rest in peace and respect. And we we just tour uh, in a very civilized way. So that, that's, you will be amazed about the new museum we got. So last year, you will love it. Let me, let, I'd like to hear about, while we're on this particular thing also, which was about the healing foods and mm. what was it, and were the, are these foods that you've, uh, you've researched and know about from the history in, of Egypt, are these healing foods still being used today or did it get buried and people don't go that way, they only use pharmaceutical drugs, or is there a combination where some people use maybe ancient methods and herbs, and also maybe modern medicine, but doing it together for healing? Uh, look, I, I, we, we, actually, it, it's very easy. I mean, yeah, it's not something, you know, secret or uh, unusual or whatever, uh, which also could help the audience now. 
Egyptians used to use garlic. Garlic? In, garlic to heal oh. most of the disease. The, the, the really? disease. My father was a my father took cancer off his face with garlic. Right. By cutting the garlic clove. He had oh. some melanomas on his head on his face here. Oh. And he took the garlic and it, he said it would sting and burn. And he mm. cut the garlic open and then put it on the, the place. Yeah. And doing that for some period of time, it all disappeared. Gar yeah. Garlic and onion. When and you go onion. to any, in the temples, on the tombs, mm -hmm. you know, the offering, you see the offerings you give to the gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. And gods and goddesses will give you in return certain things like long life, happy heart, prosperity. You always you see that, you know, all the things about that, giving offerings, and you get in return from God the four or five things he gives. Mm -hmm. uh, so so, so you, what you will see on the offerings, mainly uh, onion, green onion, or, or dry onion, mm -hmm. and garlic, uh, bread, uh, and also some spices like cumin and some other spices. So uh, Human, used to have bread. Yeah, uh, garlic. Uh, garlic. Mainly garlic. Garlic heal garlic. everything. Egyptians used to used to deal with cancer and uh, uh, diabetes since then, and uh, they use garlic and onion and others. And uh, and uh, if you use garlic a lot, you prevent uh, cancer today. Mm -hmm. any, uh, lots of benefits of having garlic, but if, but of course you need to have those without getting sugar. I mean, you don't get a piece of cake, then you get some garlic, so it will it's not really it will not work. So, <laughs> so <laughs> sugar is the worst part, you know, which causes all the problems. So yeah. sugar or or you know pasta and stuff like. That. So, but if you use this kind of and vegetables also you just use vegetables and certain fruits. Uh, uh, so, so vegetables, all kinds, also used uh, to heal and to so so their food, their usual food is a food to heal their body. Mm -hmm. So, so if their meals, the everyday meals, you know, lots of fish you see in the tombs, lots of fish and birds. That's that's kind of food give you good health. Uh, or uh, fresh uh, oil, olive oil, uh, and other uh, fresh uh, oils that could heal also. So that's very much. Uh, but that's, but to, to talk about this point, we we'll, we'll have to explain something. That uh, uh, Egyptian used to rely not only in food and remedies and stuff like that, but also on uh, uh, scientific uh, researches. So, so they have their researches, which is scientific, and uh, which includes the remedies and the herbs and the food and whatever, but also the magic part mm -hmm. and the religion part. Mm -hmm. Because they believe that the spirit and the body uh, attach it. And most of the, the problems of the body comes from the spirit so if you and they believe that the channels of the body if it it is you know, like the vessels and other channels if, if it uh, they call closed or uh, stuck uh, uh, that will cause problem so which will happen by the spirit so if you deal with the spirit to to let the channels clear and open, it will heal. Uh, you know, you, you will be healed. And uh, that's include the scientific uh, steps you'll get. You know, the medicine we we know, the, you know, the medicine and the surgeries we do. But it should include magic and religion uh, stuff. Because we believe also that gods and goddesses is part of what you get. Angry, angry gods and goddesses is part of any disease. Also, demon spirit could cause a disease. So you need to have spells for protections and spells for gods and goddesses to 
to uh, heal the uh, body plus what we do like the, well, the doctor do so that's why the priest used to be a doctor you know the doctor used to be a priest and the same person is a magician uh, just use music also as part of the magic mm -hmm. so you see uh, musicians uh, are priests also in the temples so it gives effect magical effect on the body so and that's what we feel you feel what you they believe that what we get is magic from when we hear the music you feel happy or you feel that you 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 don't really think about your problems and you get good mood that's healing that's magic so we don't give it a name we don't we don't we don't give the effect of the music a name so we should just we hear the music and i feel good that's magic so little music it may it makes you feel good so that's magic so egyptian used to feel in magic uh, side by side with the scientific research which 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 was very advanced at the time so you see deal with cancer we used to deal with uh, with uh, uh, diabetes they used to have surgeries uh, complicated surgeries uh, uh, but they, they, they couldn't really do operations deep in the body mm -hmm. in the time that's why they just use magic only to to heal the, anything inside but 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 close to the service they used to do very complicated uh, operations so this would be the priest or priestess who would do the magic and the physician would do the bodily part. Uh, yes, but he, he do both, actually. Oh, he could be both. He, do both. he is a physician, he, as a priest, is a physician and magician. So he, and also do a religion part, religion part, which is narrating spells, which could protect the body, heal the body, uh, uh, get the support of the gods and goddesses to heal the body, uh, fight the demon uh, spirit. So, in the same time, while he's doing the operation, he narrates the spells, give the energy, gives the power to the deceased, so he it could heal. Actually, he, we do that while he's preparing the mummy. While, while they are preparing the mummy. They are doing that also while they are opening the body taking the stuff out and put the soul with, they are narrating sentences from the egyptian book of the dead uh, for the 70 days 70 days of narrating uh, to protect the body narrating spells uh, uh, but while they are narrating the spells relying on magic and stuff like that they do the actual work which which is a chemistry and you know adding salt some some recipe uh, which is perfect enough to keep the mummy until today intact the brilliance of the egyptian people back in the pharaoh time, i mean it's unbelievable yeah. the knowledges that they had i i might be wrong but wasn't there something where something was uncovered and the seeds or the plant or something it was still like it was very, very old, but the seeds and things were still intact in good in good shapes. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's uh, still still we sometimes we know what they did, but how they did it. Uh, you can't do it today. You can't have you you can't make you can't you, you can't make uh, a mommy stay stay for uh, forever. But also, it's not the mommy only. only. Everything they can they could keep anything intact, the chair of you know the wood, the the textile, the mm -hmm. the, the, the customs of Tut Amen, like made yesterday, the shoes, leather, like made yesterday. So they could add chemicals to deal with the materials to make it live forever. That's why scientists study hard. Uh, the ancient Egyptian monument, because if they if they if they discovered how they do, uh, how they keep things intact, that would be a revolution for the industry. 
until today, they, they can't uh, invent uh, textile or leather could stay forever. I mean, never, yeah, they can't. So uh, if they discover that, that will be a revolution for us today. So that's why they keep, uh, this, they are not, you know, they spend millions of dollars for researchers. So willing to discover something could uh, uh, make a revolution in industry in many ways, in medicine, in, uh, in many ways. Yeah. And we, we did some, actually, we discovered the language that, you know, hundred some years ago, which mm -hmm. is a huge step to, to understand. Then we discovered many months, many months uh, could help us to uh, explain what's going on. But Egyptians were clever to hide all the signs mm -hmm. they discovered. So, so what we discover usually anything about their lives, even the relation between wife and husband, they, they wrote everything. So, but what, what's, which you know, about science hidden hidden totally, even from the other civilizations. It's, That's it's, why they stayed on the top for 3,000 years. It, it, other civilization couldn't really get uh, the secret of, of their science. But of course, Greeks later on inherited their uh, civilizations. As you put that, they got lots of the secrets. And uh, then later, the Romans take over and also inherited some, not all. Uh, that's why we got wave today of, from what the Egyptians got before, but not all. So what I'd like to do is, all of this I find fascinating. And I remember going to a museum on the water and it was a museum of mummification. And ah. it was fascinating to see, we went in there and they were showing you the process or there was- you know, Look, sir. Yes, and it was very, very amazing. So what I would like to do before, as we're winding up now, we'd like to discuss actually the tours that you do and yeah. let our listeners and audience know a few things, which is before we start talking about the tours, if you could just verbally say where they can contact you if they are interested in finding about the tours you give, because some yeah. of our audience is only listening on a podcast some are watching mm. on YouTube and on YouTube, we will have the description and your contact information there. But if you could uh, tell them where they could find out about the tours, and then if we could have a little tour of what it's like to do your tour. Yeah, actually I use my Facebook to meet with my ex tourists and my friends and any future tourists. Uh, but as you say, I have to give them, you know, maybe I can narrate for them and tell them the email which is kh underscore n underscore l hinawi e l h e n n a w y at hotmail.com. So okay. kh underscore n underscore e l h e n n a w uh, y at hotmail.com. So, so that's, that's my email. You can contact me anytime. Perfect. And on our, we'll have a website. They can also contact or take a look at. That'll be in our description. So tell Great. us the things I was wondering about your tours were what different types of tours you offered and uh, anything that you'd like to share that would excite our audience and any photos that we can Great. add at this time of groups or places that you might have taken people to. Because yeah. I can't, not, I, I mean, my personal self is I can't express enough the beauty and magnificence of the experience of traveling in Egypt. Yeah. It, it, it's like, I can't, so, I'm just saying I want to come back. Actually, yeah. Actually, uh, I like for my tourist to, to have his lifetime tour. So as you, as you said, fantastic, fantastic places, fantastic places, lots of history. Mm -hmm. But also the tour, I have to admit, it is uh, hectic, or I mean, lots of not hectic in in uh, in uh, in negative way, in positive way. Lots lots of information, lots of sites, uh, dates. Uh, you walk a lot uh, up and down. Uh, uh, 
we are excited. So uh, you are willing to, and I am excited too. I am willing to go every single corner. Uh, what I do, I do an extraordinary uh, tools. I don't do like other others or typical tools. Like, like I spend all day long from the morning until the night. Mm. So uh, usually eight hours and it is done. You are back to your hotel, you relax and whatever. Sometimes you, you don't need that. So you need to go back uh, to your uh, hotel and just relax and whatever. So, so I, I am willing to spend the whole day uh, moving around. So uh, that so so most of the tours concentrate on uh, history and sites, and that's it, which is amazing, of course, and enough. But also Egypt, not only history, not only. Uh, religion and magic and sacred places but also people and these people inherited that i mean you need to sit with the people feed the, because, because they are the egyptians they they inherited this civilization so we need to see how they became today uh or we are muslims and coptics in egypt we, and, and some jew uh we are different muslim and coptic and jewish different than any of those around the world they are Egyptians. So the, the Christian, the Coptic, and the, we go to the church. We don't really visit the monument and how it's nice and historical and whatever, but I let you pray with them Sunday and Sunday. You stand with them, pray, feel the spirit, the intent around, and they narrate Coptic, ancient Egyptian language. You, you, you don't realize that. I mean, you, you know, you don't believe that Egyptian until today in the church they narrate ancient egyptian in, in, in ancient egyptian language maybe they don't understand but they, later on they translated to arabic their language they, they, few few minutes in egyptian then uh, they, they hurted the civilization that's part that's that's part of, of what i do different uh, also we merge with people egypt they keep talking about uh, Egypt is dangerous, whatever. Egypt is very safe. People are, are oh, very, very safe friendly. There. friendly. friendly you, you've yeah. been here. So, did you feel any harassing or, or people are friendly? So friendly that I have, I have pictures with people I would just meet on the ferry or yeah. you would just sit down. Nice young men, gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> we used to have, you know, the, the era of terrorism, terrorists came from outside. We sent people to Afghanistan and to to defend, uh, to war, to to fight against Soviet Union in the 70s. Later on, they adopted by terrorism, to, uh, 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 terrorists there. Then they came back with this kind of political agenda driven from somewhere, whatever. Yeah. But we, yeah, we kept fighting for a long time. Them, but we we won the battle. That's it. Egypt today, the safest spot on earth, because we got rid. We are we are we get we, we got rid of you know all all the terrorists out of the nation, between in jail or escaped outside. So they are free all over the world. By the way, they have organizations. They are they are financed. Whatever in Egypt, they are not exist. Uh, security forces the uh, one of the best in the world today to deal with terrorism uh, the west the western uh, governments even the and the eastern governments rely on egypt in the security in the national security egyptian national security to how to deal with terrorists how to find them how to get them so we we have good experience we fight them for tens of years and some of them originally egyptians that's why we are we we are uh, we have good experience in that so egypt today clear of that so totally so feel safe to come if you're afraid about ter terrorism so we don't have terrorism uh, uh, about coronavirus we are much better today i mean we we have safety measures all over the place the, the number of cases is low uh, some places like Aswan, like Sharm el Sheikh, is uh, almost zero cases. Oh, Back I to my, my 
back to my, uh, I just let me interrupt for a second. You sent me some photos that I don't know where they are right now, but they were the most beautiful waters I had ever seen. And it was such beautiful. I don't know where you were in Egypt for these amazing places. And you said, oh, you should come and relax here. All I could think about was I would love to relax there. But I was only thinking of pyramids and stone and this. Why? And I was shocked to know uh-huh. that there was this other place. I don't remember yes, the name. Actually, we have places the best on earth. I mean, and the most modern also. We, I mean, the 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 most the the the, the uh, seven stars hotels. Uh, you know, you go to Melodive or Bahamas for the rich. You know, to spend mm-hmm. the days and you spend tens of thousands. If you come to Egypt. You visit all what we talking about, are talking about, sacred places, of simple, you finish. When you finish, I I like to offer, uh, of course, it, it could reach seven days, but I offer at least four days, five days in Sharm Sheikh. So you can feel, it, it's, it's in Sinai, you know, if you are religious, that's a sacred place. I mean, where, is, uh, where, where, where God uh, talked to Moses. So uh, Sharm el-Sheikh is about a few minutes, and you can visit the the mountain of Moses there, and uh, very sacred place there. So you go to Sharm el-Sheikh, uh, weather is perfect, is it is healing. I you know you see some uh, some cases some uh, uh, people got diseases from Europe. They come just to heal, you, they just sit in the sun. The doctors sit to them. You ha- you go to Sharm el-Sheikh just. Stay under the sun. So that's that's your medicine. That's what you do. So uh, Sharm el Sheikh, uh, it's a sacred place in Sinai. So I like to offer after you finish the the tough, you know, hectic tour. So you relax and you you use the your money too because you spend almost nothing compared with what you could spend in Maldives or Bahamas, and it's it's better than there. So you will surprise that we have that. And uh, for some reason, not famous. I don't. I don't understand. Also, I offer, if if it's possible, to go to Siwa Wadis in, in the Western Desert. It's a fantastic place. So uh, for a couple of days or so. So, uh, so by that way, so you mix between history and uh, fun. You, Egypt, you spend nights and you spend days and. That's uh, very much uh, you can do in the tour, you know. Uh, and I add also nights in every place we go. We spend, after we finish the tours, we spend the nights between Egyptians in nice places, in cafes, different levels. You see how the rich, the poor, the, the different levels live together. So, uh, which is still, still nice while, while life is tough today. So, uh, we started to be having kind of Western life. So, so, but still, we, we got the, the Egyptian touch still there. So, which, which, uh, which I, I like to pick it up for you. Also, the food I offer, uh, you know, I like to, you know, what, you know, we did talk about the Egyptian food, the, 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 the healing Egyptian food. That's actually your meals during the tour. So you walk with me, you, you do activities, you have a nice food and uh, give you energy. In the end of the tour, you feel very good. I mean, it is like healing tour. So, <laughs> so that's very much about my tools. But sadly, sadly, uh, last tour I did, last, you know, I mean, since the corona, uh, people uh, afraid to, some people got the gut, I mean, they like to visit, and I, I got tourists, but very little. Uh, my colleagues also got some Americans, but very little. Uh, but nothing happens. They he come, they enjoy, they spend time. And imagine, you go to the pyramids, the pyramids, all the pyramids for you, Allah, for you, few people. Uh, Sphinx, you are face to face with Sphinx, Sphinx without the thousands, usually disturb you. Yes. Uh, you, you go to the tomb. You are the only one there, so that's yeah, a privilege. Yeah. I mean, why you don't use it? You, I, I, 
I, uh, mm. my advice is please use the advantage. Yeah. The, the, the dollar is high for no reason, for no reason. It will be down again. So uh, it is about about 18 Egyptian pounds. So so use your money. I mean, I mean, you use the, the, the advantage of the dollar. Egypt got good economy, so it will not stay for long that way. Do you so, do uh, trips down the Nile also, or? Sure, yeah, I have, uh, uh, you know, I always pick the best of everything. I, I, you know, I deal with the best agents, you know. Uh, most of the agents get certain, uh, certain, uh, uh, like hotels, certain night cruise, certain place to deal with. I always deal with the best of each uh, place. So I have different agents do the job for me and they are trusted. Uh, uh, like there is, I have like couple, couple hotels in Sharm Sheikh, like Paradise. Uh, amazing, I love them. Uh, in 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 Aswan, I have few uh, boats, amazing boats, and all of my tourists get amazed about what they do and the service there. Uh, in Cairo, also, I have some hotels, so we don't waste time in traffic. Cairo, like any big city, got traffic. We yeah, we stayed at the King's Palace, mm. and for the last two nights before we were leaving Egypt. That was the only really fancy hotel we stayed at. We were more staying with Egyptian, like bed and breakfast, or I don't know what you would call it. And yeah. our, friend, you know, our friend would find us these very inexpensive, you know, they, you know, they were funky, but that was fine. We were right across from the Sphinx, you know, and we yeah. were Egyptian people. But I have to say the last two nights at the King's Palace, was a magnificent just to be in such an amazing place as this that had once been the king's palace. Yeah. And I wanted we wanted a fez hat. That was all we, we, we uh, Ma Marriott, I think. Marriott, huh? I don't think it's a it Marriott. Marriott. Yeah. I thought it belonged oh, to Oh, Mina House. Mina House. Yeah. A big, yeah. amazing place. And just as we were leaving, the the man who was helping us with our luggage was so kind. And I said, we didn't get our Fez hat. How can we go home? And mm. he sold us the Fez hat off his head and uh, went back into the taxi. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's nice. <laughs> so now we have a little bit of, you know, we've got a little bit of Egypt directly from his sweat to ours, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the that's end of nice. a perfect experience. So, yeah. um, so I was, I want you to, anything else you want to share about the tours now as we're winding down, as we're getting. Yeah, into that's why, that's what I'm, I'm offering to the audience. I mean, it's, it's the right time. Don't think about staying home, heading uh, away from Corona, whatever. Uh, if you take the decision to visit Egypt, I believe you'll be safe enough, even safer than home. Uh, and it's 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 you know as you said as I said it's a privilege because not so many people visit so you can get the good price for the uh, best tour. Yeah. Uh, also, if if if, if uh, I adjust the tour up to your interest, some people don't like to go to Sharm Sheikh or don't like to do lots of historical on on. Or, or people like to focus on, like, up to your background. If you are uh, Jewish or uh, into Christianity, or you like to visit historical, more historical churches, uh, synagogues, or mosques, or whatever. So we, I always focus on what, what in your interests. I did not, I, I come from a Jewish family. And I had no idea there were synagogues there. I I would have loved to have seen the synagogue. No, actually, we have the oldest the synagogues in the world. I mean, we have the synagogue where Moses oh. uh, prayed to God before leaving Egypt. So it's in the, it's in the center. It's close to the hanging church. Mm -hmm. So it's behind the hanging church, old Cairo. So it's the oldest synagogue in the world. I mean, wow. where Moses actually prayed there before leaving Egypt. So that's one of the historical uh, uh, synagogues. Uh, but also we have the oldest church and the oldest mosque in the world in the simple part. That's what we call the 
religion complex, uh, the oldest religion complex in Earth. So we've got the synagogue and the churches and the most the oldest mosque. So uh, so that's up to your interest. Actually, uh, we we uh, we do tours. So uh, and do you and do you do tours where like when we did ours, we went with a friend and it was just us and yeah. it was just a small little group. Do you do groups like say if there was eight or ten, or do you look more? Oh, sure, I mainly do groups. I mainly do groups. But but actually, because tourism is not that uh, good, I mean, people don't come in groups. So like, I get guests like you. I mean, someone sent me an email. I like to come in that month uh, with my wife, with my kids, stuff like that. But yeah. usually, I do groups. So uh, of course, groups will get good discount. I mean, if, especially if the group in harmony mm -hmm. and friends or family, they'll enjoy it a lot. So, so it's good times, you build the great memories. So uh, the way we do the tours, we'll, we'll, they will enjoy it. So I, of course I do groups and that's, got, they will get, uh, if they come in groups, you'll get a great discount. I want to say that we have taken my kids to different places around the world. So it's okay. not like they've never traveled. I won't mention all the countries they've been to. But they were teenagers when we went to um, Egypt. I think yeah. my daughter was 13 or 14, and my son was 17, maybe. Yeah. And they will, they will, and now, you know, she's in her, in her, she's 26 and he's 32. And they oh. still say that Egypt was the top list place vacation family thing we ever did. But if so, the, you know, I, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to anyone like you, not you. Mm -hmm. But if you did visit Egypt, what you will do with me, like, like you never visited Egypt before. Yeah. So especially- I, I, I'm, if we... I'm ready to go tonight. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, yes. and the point of view, like I, I take you from, from the airport. First thing I do in next morning, the pyramids. Mm -hmm. So you start to do a trip with the Pharaoh through the underworld. So we'll go through your trip with the Pharaoh through the underworld. So we'll visit the tombs, we'll visit the temples, we'll visit. So we are going with the, the Pharaoh through his trip under, under the world until he get his resurrection. So it is a spiritual uh, tour, uh, uh, healing, and also historical. You get knowledge and you visit the best of Egypt and sacred places that, you know, it's, it's an honor to, to go to sacred places. It's yeah, and, and, and last, last, last uh, 12 years, I mean, while their tourism wasn't that, uh, that high, mm -hmm. uh, we, we did lots of rebuilding and renovating the sites. Sharm el Sheikh today is very modern, you know, very modern. Like, uh, we are competing with Monaco, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sharm el Sheikh. I don't want to say much better than Monaco. I don't want to say that, mm -hmm. but uh, it is it is much better than Monaco because you see a lot, you will enjoy a lot. The weather is much different. You'll get magical sun. I, I go with my, my with my family every year. We, it, there is touch of magic in in Sinai. In well, the sun, the sun there is different. I'm looking forward to you sending me the photos to match this because I can't actually pronounce the names of those places. Char but Charmashi, when you send, yeah. Yes, when you send me the photos, you'll just write underneath that this is so I'll know where to place that in our show here. Ooh. And for us, audience, for the rest of the audience to be able to see that I'm not joking when I said it was the most beautiful waters. I could not believe how beautiful what you showed me was. So I'm looking forward to sharing these photos as soon as you send them to me. We'll put them in the show here for everyone to see so that they can get right. excited about planning a tour sometime yeah. in the near future. Sure. So is there yeah. anything else you would like to say before we wind down now here to our closing? No, actually, I'm uh, really happy, grateful for that meeting. And thank you. You... Uh, you uh, convinced me to, to do to do that and actually it is nice to talk to you and to the to the audience 
And I like to meet again to talk about uh, something in specific or in general, in general as, uh, as you like. So it would be nice to meet again. Well, I would love that very much. And I would definitely have you back. And I look forward to our audience enjoying this show with us. Hopefully. And, um, I'm going to just go to our closing. But if you'll just stay right there before I finish, we'll just sure. have a little quick goodbye together. So I'll be right sure. back in a second. Okay. So audience, I hope you enjoyed our visit to Egypt today and the wonderful experience we have listening right with Khalid about what it's like to be there. And I also want to tell you that we're now, as I said, over 800 subscribers and doing our, as we do, only two shows a month. I have to thank my family because my husband, David, does all my descriptions and titles. My daughter, Nancy, posts all of the shows on all the sites, Apple, Spotify. I don't even know what they all are, but all these different sites and she takes care of that. And then my son, Rich, is producing the show for me when it's done. So it's a family operation and I'm really happy to have their support. So I just want them to know this is a shout out to you family. Thank you so much for all the help that you've given me. And I'm really grateful for it because I'm really not a tech person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I will, nice. I will yeah. see you all uh, in our next show and looking forward to it. Have a wonderful time, a great mm -hmm. couple of weeks. And please remember, stories share your stories because stories can heal and we learn from each other when we share stories and it is one of the oldest forms of communications okay thanks so much and have a great day Welcome.